A Feast from the Orient, only this one is for your brain. This is Sega Masters. You'd think these two guys would be a little concerned about the dragons breathing fire on them during their game. Anyway, today's episode is another chapter of Sega's endless quest for famous titles to bolster their console's library in North America. And this time around we're looking at Shanghai, a western exclusive conversion of Activision's hit computer puzzle game. Yes, it's another port of a computer title, but unlike Spy vs Spy, which we covered two episodes ago, Today's feature isn't an ancient computer game making its American Master System debut long after its popularity had faded. Though Sega's console would still see a few more Pastor Prime computer games pop up in its library before the end of the Sega Tonka era in 1989. Shanghai's appearance on the Master System came when the game was still well known in gaming circles and not a forgotten relic from a different era. And it even helped Sega once again bring something new to the video game table. The creation of Brody Lockhart, Shanghai first appeared on the Macintosh in the summer of 1986 and pretty much gave birth to the tile matching breed of electronic puzzle games. It's also known for originally using depictions of tiles from the famous oriental puller game Mahjong as its game pieces, which has unfortunately led to the mistaken belief that Shanghai must be an electronic version of Mahjong itself. That is actually not the case since Mahjong is actually a four-player rummy style contest that very few in America know how to play. If anything, Lockhart insisted his creation was inspired by an old Chinese game known as The Turtle, which is mostly similar to certain solitaire card games, only using Mahjong tiles instead of a deck of cards. Mahjong Solitaire, if you will. Regardless of its origins, Shanghai did well enough on the Mac to quickly get converted to the other computer platforms, and would ultimately go on to be a big success for Activision. Naturally, a number of sequels followed, as well as countless clones and knockoffs typically found on numerous Windows freeware packs. The game's popularity on both sides of the Atlantic made its entry into the video game realm inevitable, and starting with the PC Engine and Famicom in the fall of 1987, Shanghai would go on to appear in various forms across the different platforms over the years, especially handhelds. Sega's conversion would appear a year later, though only in the US and Europe, and just as Sega introduced fantasy role-playing games to the North American console market with the release of Miracle Warriors, Shanghai essentially marked the debut of puzzle games to Western consoles. When you begin your session, 144 tiles are shuffled and randomly arranged in a 5-level pyramid-like structure known as the Dragon Formation, and your goal is to clear all the tiles off the playing field in pairs by making matches, in essence, slaying the dragon. You do this by simply moving the cursor and clicking on a tile, then you need to click on its match and hit the button a third time to confirm the match, making both of them disappear from the playing field. Of course, there are a few rules to follow in performing this task. First of all, you can only click on tiles that are free, meaning nothing's on top of them and they can be moved to the left or the right unimpeded. Also, most of the matches have to be identical, from the tile's number to its suit. Shanghai uses the standard Mahjong suits of the dots, bams, and cracks, each of which consists of nine numbered tiles. The three dragon tiles and the four winds also have to match exactly to be cleared from the playing field. However, there are a pair of exceptions. Any two of the four seasons tiles can be matched, and the same goes for any two of the four flowers. For whatever reason, the game isn't compatible with the Genesis controller, meaning you'll have to use the regular Sega gamepad, which does a very solid job of moving the cursor around, though you'll wish it was a touch faster. Like most puzzle games, Shanghai's presentation is as simple as its gameplay, as all you mainly have to look at are the tiles on the playing field, which look decent enough, and the 3D perspective is pulled off nicely, though it can be a bit hard to distinguish between certain designs at times. Three oriental sounding tunes are available to choose from as background music, and while they aren't the best pieces of audio, they're still pleasant to listen to and don't really intrude on the game. You can switch between the tunes at any time or even turn the music off entirely if you wish. But also like most puzzle carts, Shanghai makes up for the visuals and audio with its surprisingly engaging gameplay that's easy to learn and a lot deeper than it first appears. 
Granted the action is mainly just clicking on matching tiles, and with four copies of every tile face being used for the game, two or even three possible pairings are often available to choose from. But what makes Shanghai so endearing is how it's a thinking man's puzzle contest, requiring more than just matching shapes to successfully slay the dragon. You often never know how removing certain pieces in one location can affect your session later down the line, so you need to be careful and strategic about which pairings you make. This is especially true when multiple pairings are open to you, as you frequently have to consider which match will be the most advantageous to you in freeing up more tiles. If you're too reckless with your matches, you can suddenly find all the tiles you need to make any more legal moves blocked, meaning you've hit a dead end and can't progress any further. In other words, your chance at achieving victory will mostly depend on your ability to plan ahead, though a little luck is involved as well. Fortunately, a few aids are at your disposal to help you should you do get stuck. You can undo any number of moves you made, enabling you to try a different path to see if you're any more successful. You can also have the game point out all matches available to you at any given time. There's also a peak feature which is for all intents and purposes your last resort option, since it will reveal the covered tiles, but will end your game instantly. Should you succeed in clearing out all the tiles, you're treated to a cool victory screen that features a nicely drawn dragon shooting a fireball before starting the next layout. Granted, this being one of the earliest versions of Shanghai, you only have the one dragon formation with the standard Mahjong tile faces and none of the customization options found in the later sequels and clones, such as varying formations and tile faces and such. Nonetheless, the random tile layouts present you with a different challenge every time you fire up the cartridge, even if some setups end up being unsolvable regardless of your best efforts. Shanghai does feature a few gameplay options to change things up. The tournament game can best be described as the time trial option, which disables the helps and imposes a time limit for you to clear the board, challenging you to post a top 5 mark. Puzzle games are also known to have a versus mode, and Shanghai doesn't disappoint in that regard. The challenge mode has two players going head to head trying to slay the dragon while looking to make the most pairings, though a time limit is placed on each player's turn to make a match. Overall, Shanghai won't dethrone Tetris as the king of the console puzzlers, but still provides some good action, especially for those seeking a more challenging test of their brain power than just maneuvering falling blocks. It certainly offers a nice change of pace from the arcade-style carts that populate the Master System library, and despite a few frustrating moments, its addictive gameplay will keep you coming back for more. Definitely add this one to your collection.